When I was a kid, I used to love magic. The idea of becoming a magician, pulling animals out of hats and making objects disappear in thin air. I used to stay up and watch those specials on TV where that guy with long hair and a ridiculously unbuttoned shirt standing in front of a fan made a private jet disappear in front of a studio audience that most certainly were not paid actors, right? In fact, I used to get those kits where you had these ready-made tricks that you could perform for family and friends. And I used to watch adults' eyes go wide when I made a handkerchief disappear in the palm of my hand. I still don't know, and frankly, I don't want to know, if they were actually amazed, but in that moment, they totally sold it. But the peak of my love affair with magic came when my parents surprised me with tickets to see David freaking Copperfield himself at the Fox in Detroit. And so we're sitting no more than three rows back from the front of the stage, center stage, and I'm waiting for David to emerge. He was going to float out on a cloud or something crazy. And as I was looking around at the Fox, it's a beautiful theater. The architectural elements are pretty incredible. And so I was taking in all the sights and looking around, and then I noticed something. There's an opening in the ceiling in the middle of the theater, and it's where lights and there are paintings, and it's really beautiful. And I saw what looked to be like fishing line connected to that part of the ceiling and tightly stretched all the way down to the stage. And at first I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me, but the closer I looked, the more I realized it wasn't just one string. There were several strings attached to the ceiling and stretching all the way down to the stage. And so I wondered what that could be about, but shortly after that, David came out and the lights and the smoke and the amazement, and so I got lost in the show until about the midpoint. When David started talking about inviting spirits into the room, which admittedly was a little freaky for me as a child, but when he did so, the spirits, these green orbs, came from the ceiling, and by now you know where this is going, and came all the way down to the stage where David was. And then I remembered the strings, and I immediately figured out the trick, the illusion. And when you go to a magic show, you know it's an illusion. But if the illusionist is impressive enough, you get lost in it because you can't figure it out. And the magic holds. But I had seen behind the curtain, so to speak. And so that illusion, while it's blowing everyone else's mind, kind of fell flat in that moment. This episode is about the illusion that we are all being awakened from in this moment. What if I told you that your life right now is worth noticing? This is the Attention Collection. I'm Anthony Garcia. Hi, friend. I want to begin this episode with a disclaimer and a promise. This will not at all be a botched attempt at unraveling the complexity of the coronavirus. It's not going to be a political rant about our government's handling or mishandling of the situation. In truth, I don't have anything to add to these conversations. But I will say this. If you're seeking direction and the proper way to handle yourself in these strange times... Please don't look to memes or your Uncle Charlie's Facebook soapbox opinions. I'm certain the CDC doesn't have it all sorted out. They've admitted as much. But I bet a few dollars they know just a little bit more than you and I. So maybe we can look to them for just a touch of guidance for now. Here's what we know about this right now. Ready? Not much. (laughs) which is part of what makes this time so unsettling. The CDC is even saying, and this is a direct quote, 
The complete clinical picture with regard to COVID-19 is not fully known. There's so much we have yet to learn, but I just want to share a couple things that I think we are all learning together in real time. Number one, normal as we know it is utterly fragile. We take so many things for granted that could quite literally disappear overnight. For instance, gathering together, handshakes, toilet paper. Who would have thought someone was going to get stomped in Kroger over toilet paper? And here we are. A couple weeks ago, my wife and I picked out photo packages for our kids' spring school pictures. Today... My wife had to go to school to pick up workbooks for at-home learning. And the teacher who handed these books to her was wearing gloves and a face mask. No joke. Public spaces are turning into ghost towns. Late night talk shows are telling jokes to completely empty rooms. The NBA, I read recently, is on par to lose like 460 plus million dollars this season. Were any of these concerns of yours a month ago? Be honest. Normal is fragile. How often do we assume that today will be like yesterday and tomorrow will be like today and on and on, rinse and repeat? We can't assume that and we shouldn't assume that. And this can be both sobering and encouraging. Sobering because things won't always be like this, so we better enjoy it. Encouraging because things won't always be like this, so don't lose hope. Wherever you find yourself on the spectrum, normal is incredibly paper thin, and it can disappear in an instant without warning. This present moment is the only thing we can be certain of. This breath, I believe this moment, even though none of us would have chosen it, is an opportunity to wake up to that reality. The second thing I believe we're learning is that, no, for real, we actually are all in this together, like it or not. This virus is forcing us to abandon individualistic tendencies, to see that we actually are all connected, and the choices that we make or don't make affect each other in significant ways. Not long ago, let's be honest, it was easy to dismiss this as a China problem, if if we even considered it at all. Them over there, it sucks, but at least it's not here. Fast forward to the doorbell ringing and COVID-19 is on our doorstep with a suitcase and a box of tissues. The idea that we are all separate is an illusion. It always has been, but now we have a chance to see behind the curtain, to see the fishing line running from the stage to the ceiling, if you will. Those of us raised in a Western context have been fed a steady diet of individualism. Yes, we work around each other, and yes, sometimes we collaborate and work with each other, but at the end of the day, it's me responsible for me and you responsible for you. It's Cain asking, am I my brother's keeper? And the answer, it turns out, is, yeah, kind of. For instance, think about hand washing for a second. I guarantee the dirtiest public bathroom you've ever been in still had a sign somewhere instructing employees to wash their hands before returning to work. But we all just cross our fingers at the restaurant and hope for the best. Now we're seeing in neon lights what has always been true. Whether or not I thoroughly take care of my hands is not only important for my well-being and health, but yours as well. And so there are two things happening simultaneously. 
people are waking up to our effect on one another and respecting that. We're putting things in place to not only protect ourselves and our families, but other people as well, especially the vulnerable, the elderly, and the immunocompromised. And there's another stream of us who are taking advantage of this moment, hoarding toilet paper and hand sanitizer and then gouging people to sell it back to them. It's kind of insane and scary. And so what we can do in this moment as the illusion of separation comes crashing down or as this idea of normal gets pulled out from under us is we can fear. And that's an understandable response. But what I'm seeing other people do is so inspiring to me. For instance, my twin daughters love their kindergarten teacher. And she just sent out a message to all the parents of the students in her class, inviting them to a Facebook page that she created where she's posting videos of herself reading books to her class like she used to when they gathered together when things were normal. And at the end of the first video last night, both of our daughters were so excited that they got to see their teacher read. And they both said, she's such a great reader. And you could see their eyes light up. She took this awkward, uncomfortable, confusing, scary moment and turned it into a way to connect differently. It's not the same. It's not as comfortable and easy as before, but it's just as meaningful. There are people who are grocery shopping for the elderly so that they don't have to put themselves at risk. There are people who, even though they are quarantined in their houses, are stepping out on their balconies and joining with one another. All of their neighbors that at one time they probably ignored, but now they're joining together in song and in dance. When the illusion is outed, when the curtain is opened up, when the fishing wire is exposed, we have an opportunity. We can recoil in fear. We can hide out. We can ignore and try our best to get back to that place of normal. Or we can lean into the discomfort of this moment. And we can realize That not only are we not separate, but we never have been. And even though we are intentionally distancing ourselves from one another in one respect, this is an invitation to get closer together than we ever have been. The Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu said, If you do not change direction, you may end up where you're heading. Think about that for a second. This is an opportunity to change directions. I think as a society, we've been heading in some pretty scary directions as of late. This is an opportunity to reset. And I don't know that any of us pushed the button, but here we are. So what are we going to do with the opportunity that is unfolding right in front of our faces? tuck back into the illusion or stand in the spotlight hand in metaphorical hand because we're not holding hands right now and boldly step into whatever future lies ahead together honestly vulnerably and openly this life that we are all living is worth our time. It's worth our noticing. Our lives are always waiting for us. It's never the other way around. And we find life in the art of paying attention. Take care of each other. Honestly, we are all we have.